Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in the Pathfinder Solution Series and I have brought forward to you a question from Optics. Uh, challenge your understanding the first question and it's uh, one of the very decent problems on visualizations of the cylindrical lens. Okay, so let's try to go through with the formal wording of the question. So you want to try it on your own, just try to pause the video here and try it for 10 to 15 minutes and then come back for the concept and the solution explanation for this particular problem okay so a cylindrical rod made of some unknown glass is placed on a ruled white paper of a common exercise book it's like a ruled book okay if axis of the rod makes an angle of theta with the ruled lines the lines appear broken and tilted at some angle alpha as shown in the figure so the ruled book is having lines this way and that cylindrical rod is placed at an angle theta to that lines and through this rod, when you're watching those rule lines, so they will appear to be broken from the original ones and they make an angle alpha with the original ones. So that's what the language of the question is all about. So the two parts is explain this appearance of the rule lines as shown and also using the information of the angles given theta and alpha, find the refractive index of the glass. Okay, very important information. The question is assume that the rod is not thick and the lines are observed from a height vertically above the rod. Okay, so you're watching right using a normal viewing and also this rod is very thin. Okay, so have a try and come back. Okay, so let's go ahead with the concept first of cylindrical lens. So this is like a cylinder through which you are watching the object. Okay, so on the left side of the screen, I've tried to make a decent comparison between the usual spherical lens that we are very much accustomed to and how different it is from a cylindrical lens. Okay, so if you have a spherical lens, like you could see on the left side of your screen where I'm pointing out here, if you have a point object and uh, you're assuming paraxial rays, then all the rays, once they pass through from the focus point, assuming this point object is at its so-called focus, then the rays actually go out in a parallel beam or vice versa. If you have a parallel beam incident on a spherical lens, then in a paraxial understanding, those rays actually go and converge to a point. But if you have the same parallel beam converging onto, let's say, uh, incident onto a cylindrical lens, then each and every plane of this particular cylindrical lens behaves like a spherical lens. So individual plane will have its point focus. Therefore, all this bunch of parallel beam will now focus onto a line. That's the basic difference between a spherical and a cylindrical lens, okay? Parallel beam focuses to a point in a spherical lens and to sum up, a parallel beam focused to a line in a cylindrical lens, okay? So if you look at the properties of a cylindrical lens, therefore, if you see a point source of light, it gives rise to a line image. Okay, but if you want a point source to produce a point image, then you have to first make sure that it becomes a line and that line you have to pass it through another cylinder, which is in perpendicular direction to end up getting it to the point. Okay, right. So that's how you again get up a point image with a point object or you could say that in case of a spherical lens the two radii of curvature that are there in two perpendicular directions ensure that this particular uh, point focus is happening whereas in cylindrical lens if you run your fingers in one direction then you'll feel a curve and if you run your fingers in a direction along the axis you feel a flat surface along that flat direction there won't be any power induced okay right so let's try to understand this by enlarging the picture of a cylindrical lens okay so the conclusion we'll try to make if you look at the middle of your picture is if you are having a cylindrical lens then in one particular direction you have a curvature in another direction, which is along the axis of the cylinder, you have a flat line. So if you see there is an object which is like having two perpendicular directions, then the direction which is in the same direction as the flat line, it will not produce any magnification. As you could see that this particular line, which is along the direction of the flat line, this if you run your finger along this direction on a cylindrical surface, it will feel flat to you. So that will hack, act like just like a glass slab. So you could see this line will produce zero 
magnification. Whereas this line, which is along the direction of a curved surface, will feel as if it's a spherical part of a lens and it either creates a diminishing or a magnifying image, or you could say that there is a power associated with it. So for any cylindrical lens, we'll associate two perpendicular direction. One is the axis direction, which is in this direction, you could see that horizontal one. In that direction, the formula that you have to use is for refraction, assuming paraxial rays is mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to a zero. It's like a flat surface. And in that flat surface direction, the magnification becomes simply one. Okay. Whereas in the other direction, which is this direction, which I call it as a power direction, these are standard words used in cylindrical lenses. You need not know the names, but you could call that as a power direction. Okay, so that power direction, which feels as if it's encountering a curved surface would have the usual curvature equation that we use for even a spherical lens mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r okay right so that magnification for any curvature will associate itself with this term divided by this term okay right so this term divided by this gives you the usual magnification which is a standard derivation okay right and and one very important thing is the same term can be written even here also but the ratio of these two because this is zero would become a one okay so i hope you could clearly understand this axis case it is magnification of a unity and in this case we have to calculate it based on the uh, information given in the question okay so two different directions and now coming to the magnification power direction in the present question. Imagine that cylindrical rod that was given in the question. Let me go back to the questions diagram carefully here in the thumbnail. So you could see you're watching, let's suppose, from the top view of this particular diagram. OK, so for a top view of that particular diagram. Right. Imagine there is a small line that is there on the page, assuming this is the page of that particular rule notebook, the each line can be divided into two parts. OK, right. One part, which is along this direction. Another part, if I mark it for your convenience, is out of the board like this. OK, we'll discuss each of these lines. OK, so if I go back to the diagram again to gain your confidence, right, what I'm trying to tell you is that each of these lines can be now further divided into two directions. One is along the direction of the curved surface. Another one is along the direction of axis. I'm th thinking of this line being having two components, one along the curved surface. You can feel this will be the curved surface as you run your fingers, whereas this would be the flat surface direction. So each of these ruled DL elements, I will think, think of it as underneath this particular object to be having two components. One is a direction along the axis and one along the curved surface. So when someone is watching from the top here, right? When someone is watching from the top, I have those components. Now one, a component which is going to feel the power and another one in this direction, you could see out of the board direction is the axis direction of that. Okay. So this dot, whatever small element of the DL length would not feel any power. Okay. It will not get any magnification. Whereas in this direction, I could clearly say that light refracts through this surface and produces image here itself. The second refraction becomes very important, which is in the curved surface. Okay. Assuming this is very thin rod, I can use paraxial rays formulae. Okay. Right. So one by V minus rays are coming from mu. So mu divided by how much is this distance Two R that I have written with a proper sign convention is equal to mu2 minus mu1, which is one minus mu in this case, divided by the negative radius of curvature because I is on this side, which is minus r. I'll rearrange, I'll get the value of one by V after rearrangement. And remember magnification for this particular line as seen by this I would be simply one by V divided by this particular term with proper sign convention, I just borrowed it. So substitute this one by V here and rearrange, you end up getting the magnification, which I'll use in the next page. So my conclusion here is that this direction produces a magnification of this one, whereas this outward direction, which is along the axis of this cylinder, produces a magnification of only one. Keep that in mind. Let's move forward to the actual diagram now. Okay. Now, if let's suppose this particular glass, you see the left side top of your screen, just follow my lead. It will all be okay. Okay. So imagine this glass was not there. Then the rule line would have been visible as it is the same line here on the picture. I've drawn it with red color. 
okay so uh, you might think this is very thick in the question he has mentioned that this is very very thin cylinder so you can consider this red line to be actually a dl length red line okay now i would say that this dl length red line can be divided into two components one is along the axis think of that as a dl line along the axis this way and another component which is along the power direction that curved surface effective power direction okay this dl based on this angle theta can you watch the theta that he has given so this if original length is dl this would be dl cos theta and this would have been dl sin theta but as you are watching this from the top view your eyes let's say out of the screen watching into the screen this dl cos theta remains same as you are watching whereas this dl sin theta gets the effect of the magnification that we found in the previous case and becomes m times of dl sin theta and since out of the two components only one component changes the resultant of these two makes a different angle from what so is supposed to be there that's why the lines appear broken okay right so assuming that dl cos theta remains same and dl sin theta becomes m times of initial where m is known from the previous page the new angle that it makes would be tan of theta plus alpha right so the value of tan of theta plus alpha is equal to the new y component divided by the old x component this remains same but this has changed remember if m was 1 i would have ended up getting tan theta so this change happens because of this m okay now i'll substitute dl gets cancelled m substituted from the previous page where well, let's me get this 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 action i'll substitute here and that becomes sin by cos is a tan and that m has been substituted so this and this we will now use it here by rearranging and i am jo my job is to find the mu value right i'll use component and dividend from here to here so subtraction in the numerator and addition in the denominator i do the same thing for this one to eliminate the value of uh, required uh, condition okay so the value of mu after rearranging all of this would from this i have to add one on both sides you end up getting this okay which was the answer given in the textbook so all the cylindrical lens does different from your uh, spherical lens is that it acts in two different directions like two different lens whereas a spherical lens whatever it does in one direction it does the same in perpendicular direction one of the practical uses of cylindrical lens is therefore used for eye defects where uh, a person has a defect in one direction but has a different defect in a perpendicular direction this kind of condition is called as astigmatism so if you ask any of your science teachers how is an astigmatic person treated with right or treatment uh, or corrected with the lens that he'll be using is a cylindrical lens the idea of cylindrical lens is it gives you different magnifications in two different directions that's the crux of this particular qu beautiful question i have absolutely love this question and it's an olympiad level 1 type of a question that you should be well versed with and also a candidate for je advance if information is given in the a uh, question paper like a comprehension and then they can uh, expect the students to solve this okay i hope you like this particular question and its presentation if you want to see more such uh, beautifully presented questions from across the series right we have pathfinder series olympiad workout series aits select series resolve series where there is doubts that are not usually answered in the standard textbooks we take them up and we try to answer them in a much elaborated manner please do make sure you go to the links of the playlist in the description posted below you can go to the uh, playlist of the channel itself i have uh, tried to curate them in the topic wise manner okay so there are certain topics that still need to be filled up i've taken the suggestions i'll do that in the near future please do surf through different videos try to sit with them for some time and i'm pretty sure you will love the content that is being delivered in this channel okay do like the video it will just just definitely push the youtube algorithm to uh, ensure that it reaches more wider audience gets me more subscriptions more motivation to provide such quality content for you in the future share this video in the whatsapp and telegram groups if you are a student and a teacher and try to get more audience for my uh, content and please help me share my knowledge of physics to a greater number of students okay um, take care stay safe and see you in the next video